Amen. And it brought me closer to God. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. We have a sister Cindy uh, Bodine was talking, and she said, oh, we get to see the new deputation. I said, it's not quite ready. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so that made me miss most of my nap. Because <clears throat> I'm supposed to always be ready. So, sister Cindy, you challenged me. Hallelujah. But I said, next year, August 1st, that's when we actually begin our deputation. We'll have the new and improved and modified and all the rest. So I get a whole year to pray for the sermons, and usually it's three of them. Uh, used to be memorized, now I have them notarized, amen? <laughs> and that's the best part, and thank God for notes, amen? amen. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, but Sister Klein, sh- she said she don't want to say nothing. So that's dangerous. Y'all like me, but y'all like to give her the money, amen? <laughs> and I do too, so it's just the way it goes, and she thinks it should be, amen? Maybe at the end, hallelujah, we'll let her talk at the end after... If I don't get you to cry, she will get you to cry. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're so happy and very thankful for everything in our church and what we're doing. I know this is uh, perilous times. There's a lot of times I never told you all the most dangerous things that we had to face. Uh, several times we had different events. One of them was, Bishop Sarton, I, I told him about it. The police was against the army. Yeah, and so the army told the police, don't come to work. If you come to work, we're going to shoot you. So do you know what it's like crossing the border with no police? It's, it's odd. And I just went to church and came right back and made sure I didn't detour. But you know who wins? The army. They got more guns. Hallelujah. But Jesus is with us. There's the point, brother. Pierce, he's done, did the altar call, so let's pray. He jumped right to the meat of the bones. Amen. But when we was facing a situation, I wondered, what are we going to do, Lord? And the Lord said, Jesus, I'm with you. And he's with us. And so as we crossed, we met many, many of the officials through the customs, the board, the police, the spies, everybody. And they knew we were the real missionaries. And they said, Pastor Klein, what's going to happen? What's going on? We're fighting our own selves. We're not fighting you. I said, you wouldn't fight me anyway. I'm leaving. Amen. You don't, you don't like me? I don't have to be here. I'm going. Amen. And he says, but what does the Bible say? I said, the Bible says perilous times. Perilous times. Nation against nation, brother against brother. Amen. But we don't have to worry. Jesus is with us. We're not alone. We're not alone. So America has been introduced to the foreign field of the chaos of uncertainty. But there is a certainty. I am. Hallelujah. Some don't know what that means. Some of us know what I am means. It means God, I am El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one. I am before there was any other, I am he. He's there. He's with us. He never leaves us. And he never forsakes us. We need to introduce him to everybody we meet because everybody's wondering what's going on. And you can say, I heard the missionary say it, perilous times. Hallelujah. I don't mean to sound fatalistic, but it seems quite obvious to me. Am I the only one feeling this? And it seems like the target is right on me. I was on the plane, Brother Sarton, and I don't talk politics. It has nothing to do with that. But all of a sudden I found out I'm a racist now just because I don't like to waste money. It's like, I don't think so. I went to John Aaron High School, class of 1982. I got two tracks. One tracks was the Ku Klux Klan and the Nazis. I thought, how can you hate Jews? Jesus is a Jew. I like Jesus. I'll take the Christian one. Hallelujah. So I think I'd know if I'm a Nazi or I, or I hate people. I don't. So don't let the world put us in a thing that we aren't and refuse to accept what they're intending to do because it's to cause division and divide. Hallelujah. But we have a promise, and the promise is that Jesus is coming, and he's coming very, very soon. And it seems more sooner than later. Amen. And I know people wonder, well, I heard this my whole life. Somebody just told us this the other day. We've heard it my whole life, and they're older than me. They were 75 years old. 
They said, from a child I heard this. I said, but remember, Noah prepared the ark 120 years. And I think, and Sister Jeannie was my Sunday school teacher, and, and uh, she, she, she taught me how to teach, so I learned a lot from them. And I used the illustration of what the kids said, and that lesson was one of them. Amen. But I start thinking sometimes, how, how long maybe there was other people? How did he build that giant thing? You ever seen that replica thing? That is unbelievable. A dude and three sons could do that. Amen. So maybe there was somebody else and maybe they left. I don't know. But the Lord doesn't want us to focus on maybes. He wants us to know who heard the voice. And God said, Noah, get in the ark. And they went into the ark and God waited seven days. And then he shut the door. God shut the door. God shut the door. So we have to be ready to hear what the voice of God is saying. And the the voice of God is saying something quite serious. Amen. I think we should show the clip, huh? Show the clip so if I go too long, I I won't miss it. So y'all going to like this. It's a little collage of Africa. I think Miss Emma's on it. There's the king of Lesotho. Church from zero to 103. That's a baboon. That little fella right there was a little Sunday school kid. The first time we went. He was about eight. Now he's still preaching. She blows, watch out. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for the work. Thank you for your spirit moving. Amen. The one man on there was the deputy foreign minister of uh, foreign affairs. And uh, the minister changed, but he never changed. And so we was able to baptize his wife. Thank the Lord. Amen. And we said, what do we do? Uh, the man said, no. We said, well, when he comes, we'll baptize all y'all together again. Amen. So it don't matter. Amen. But so gave us a good idea. Amen. Jesus told the disciples, he said, go into all the world. What did he say? He said, go. And he said, preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. It's not good if you're not going to follow. But he said, these signs will follow them that believe. Amen. In my name, they're going to cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues and I don't want to take up serpents because I will be exiting a new wall door. Amen. Right through there. Amen. I'm not going to. Anyway, if you drink of any deadly thing, it's not going to hurt you. And they that lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. In verse 20, I like it. And they went forth and they preached everywhere. And the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Everybody said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Knowing what Jesus has in store for us is so important. It's paramount. Because the unparalleled times that we see. I think about what Jesus told the disciples one time. And Jesus was with John. And John is writing what Jesus said. And he said, John 21 and 18. And verily, verily, that means this is really important. It's really, really important. If something repeats twice, it's important. So when God says that, he says, when you were young, 
thou girdest thyself, then walk whether, the, the, whether you want it. And when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth your hand, and another shall gird thee. Somebody's going to help you along the way. And carry thee whether thou wouldest not go, because you couldn't do it. And this spake signifying his own death, that he shall glorify God. Because after he's dead, he's not going to be able to resurrect his body. The Holy Ghost resurrects him. And when he had spoken this, and he said unto them, this is really important. He said, follow me. So everybody say, follow me. If someone's following you, where are you going to take them? Where are you taking them? Are you bringing them closer to God? Are they going to see something? Now, here's the hard lesson because I, I identify Peter more than anything. If I could create an app, it'd be a word catcher app. I'm the only one word catcher, so I don't say <laughs> I should have never said that. Wait, wait, let me catch those. So I've learned not to talk as fast. Amen. If you think it, do not say it. Wait a little bit. Okay, there's your word catcher. Amen. Peter, he tried his best. One second he's getting praised. Next second he's getting rebuked. Amen. And look what Peter says. He's there with him. And then Peter turning, seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved. Okay, John had to rub that in there. He knows that Jesus loves me, right? And he leaned on his breast at the supper. Not only that, he had a special place, and he was right there. And, Jesus, and Peter's turning to John, here, and this is what he says. And he leaned on him and he says uh, to the Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? And Jesus, Peter, seeing him that Jesus said, Lord, what shall this man do? And, and here's the hard part. And he said unto him, if I tarry, if I will that he shall tarry until I come, what's it to thee? Uh-oh. What's it to thee? Follow thou me. So he said, follow me twice. He said it in a general statement to, to John, but he's saying it specifically to somebody who may be a little bit misdirected. Remember, Peter was uh, denied the Lord three times at the same time as uh, Judas uh, betraying the Lord. They had two uh, uh, rebukes or correction that were necessary. And I like what Brother Bourne preached about being offended. And it seemed that Judas was offended that time the alabaster ointment was broken. And, and he, he took offense to that. He says, we could sell that and give it to the poor. You see, but he had a different motive. And I found out what that motive was. There was a political motive. And his motive was to get the Roman Empire off of their back and reinstituting the throne in the kingdom of David. And he didn't get that Jesus kept saying, you don't get it. Y'all are trying on your own. But my kingdom is not of this world. And Peter tried. He said, but Lord, I won't deny. You know, I'll, I'll never deny. And he said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not only will you make a mistake, but you can deny me three times before the, before the cock crows. But he said, but wait a minute, I prayed for you. He prayed for him. He says, you see, the devil has desired to sift you as wheat. So I think we're at the sift you as wheat part of the devil's plan, don't you think? And if that be the case, we need to lean on that prayer that Jesus prayed for Peter. And he said, not only for you, Peter, but those that follow the words that you say. And that's the words we follow. That's why we call ourselves Apostolic Pentecost to the day of the apostles. And if I could name a church congregation building, I would call it the first day church. Because everybody's going to wonder, what the world does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> let me tell you what it means. But the Lord didn't let me name one yet. Amen. <laughs> But I do try to bring that up if I can. Amen. What is the first day church all about? It's the beginning of what God intended. It's the beginning of why he actually came. It was the purpose. And here Peter denied the Lord three times, but God gave him three opportunities of an expression of love. Peter, do you love me? Amen. Peter, do you love me? He's asking him. It's like, Jesus, what do you think? I'm simple. I heard you the first time. And, but he didn't hear what Jesus is saying. But finally, he got it. And if you love me, you're going to feed my lambs. And I thought about how helpless lambs are. Because I'm from town and we got the mosquitoes on the edge of the swamp over here. So I didn't see too many lambs. Y'all seen lambs? I know the man that has the, the, the big uh, cranes. I don't know if they're still there or not. But he used to have goats. And man, those goats stunk. Woo, that man smelled like a billy goat. Woo, it was rough. But needless to say, sheep. They're very, very, uh, they, they, they're dependent. They need a shepherd. They need somebody to guide them. 
They need somebody to protect them, take them to the grass, take them to the, to the uh, water, get them out of the heat of the day. From what they said, Bishop Sartner, if I'm not mistaken, they will literally stand in the sun and just die and pass out because of heat uh, exposure. So thank God for somebody caring and that somebody's Jesus. He doesn't want us to be wandering. He doesn't want us eating the wrong food. He doesn't want us drinking the wrong water. He wants us to be safe. And you all saw the one with the wolf in sheep's clothes to be afraid of the big bad wolf. Amen. He's there with us. And I think fear is a captivating factor the devil's trying to impose upon us. And through the message, I had a different one, but Brother Sarton wanted me to, 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 to go this way, so I had to change it a little bit. But I can't help but leave a, a, a thought we went to camp meeting, and I thank God for Brother Steve. We love Brother Steve. I don't see him. Is he here? Thank you, Brother Steve, Sister Shona. They, they helped us. The very first time we went and went to camp meeting, and they said, hey, I thought you, you couldn't go. I said, well, I didn't get enough time. And they said, well, we're going to help you. And they sent some, and, and that was enough to get there. And along the way, we went. We had enough to pay our tithes and offerings, and we was a bit short on the hotel, so we was going to leave a day early. And on the way out, we saw somebody, and by chance, we just went to the concession stand to use the restroom, whatever Sister Klein uh, wanted to do, and there was a lady, she stood up, she said, I've been looking for you. She said, I met y'all the first day. Y'all from New Orleans, right? I said, yes, ma'am. She says, the Lord told me to give you this, and it was just enough to stay the extra night. So here, God helped us to get there, and somebody else helped us to stay. And, and, and I'm glad sometimes I'm not in the point that I don't need help, but all of us need help. Especially when it comes to the things of God. It's not that we're trying to use it or abuse it. It's a matter of God blessing them. And thank God for that blessing. Amen. So as, as, as we look, we, we can see what God has. And his, his intention is to let us be trusting in Him. And He said, And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. So I started thinking about that, Brother Sarton. The gates of hell shall not prevail. That doesn't mean we won't see them. I'm not trying to be fatalistic, y'all. I'm just letting you know. But it's not going to prevail against us. Hallelujah. Now, I played uh, football. You wouldn't believe it, could you? Because I was under tall. Amen. And I was a lineman, believe it or not. I just didn't make it high from John Aaron High School onward. I broke my cheekbone, so I couldn't play. But I was, I was, I was small. And Klein means little in German. And so I'd get low, and the coach would say, get low, Clyde, get low. And I could knock down two guys, the big ones. It didn't matter because I'd get low. And if you get low enough, guess what? Coming up power. Amen. And the other guys would get so floistered, Brother Sartan. <laughs> I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. And, and I learned to knock one down and get the other one at the same time. Now, I didn't run in the ball because I can't run fast. Amen. But I made a big opening for the guy to make a touchdown. Hallelujah. So I had a part. Amen. I had a part. And so, so I, would, I would listen to what the cheerleaders would say. And they'd say, push them back, push them back, way back, right? Y'all heard that? Am I in trouble now for, for giving a football chant? But I think about the gates of hell. Why don't we just get up right up against them and say, wait a minute, Jesus, push them back, push them back, way back. Hallelujah. We got the Abraham walk. Wherever we go is ours. And it's Jesus's. We're joint heirs with him. Hallelujah. So we need to say a little bit, say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You came this far without me paying attention, but in the name of Jesus, we're pushing you back, we're pushing you back way back. Because I know the Lord can come today, but there's some more that we want to see saved. Some of our family we would like to still see saved. Some lost loved ones we're still reaching the Bible study, we want to see them saved. I mean, Brother Sarton said it today. He said, the Lord can come today, but we'd like to get a few more before he comes. Amen. Hope I didn't get you in trouble by saying what he said. Amen. Sometimes preachers, we talk and we just need to keep it amongst ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want him to lose my confidence because I, I love him and I respect him dearly. Hallelujah. My brother from another mother. Amen. Hallelujah. So as Jesus talked to Peter and he talked to John, I thought about a man and, and this is a different sermon. I, I love it. I wish I would have preached it, but the Lord said, no, not yet. And, and this is what Jesus told in Luke. I like Luke because he's a doctor, and so he writes notes. He also wrote the book of Acts. So he, he has a way of putting a lot in there that maybe an everyday person may not see because of the study uh, principles. 
maybe to come back so to, to reuse and reference. And he said, Luke 14 to 26, he said, If any man come to me, Jesus speaking, and hate not his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his brethren, his sister, yea, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That almost sounds like somebody who's got a, a, a bad mental problem. But that's not what he's referring to. He's talking about the denying his flesh and denying himself. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And then right in the middle he builds a story. Which of you intending to build the tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish? So we start, but we need to finish. Say it out loud. Say we start, but we need to finish. I start in repentance serving God, getting baptized in Jesus' name, being filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? So that I can finish. Paul, after all that he said, I finished the race. Man, he said, I'm pressing toward the mark, just like those champs. They, they just go that little bit. They got the ribbon. The other guy, not so much. You remember the first guy, the other guy? Ah, not so much. He missed it by that much. Isn't that like that? Amen. But our race isn't against people. It's against the world and winning to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. The devil uses false pretenses and things uh, alluring young people away. And my heart goes to young folks. I still think I'm 22 when I got the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you. And I look in the mirror and I realize what the world happened. Some old dude stepped in there. I had hair for a little while, but where to go now? I noticed in one of the baptizing photos, and I went, what? Where to go? And my wife said, it's been gone. I just didn't want to tell you. I said, I didn't know until I took the picture like that, Sister Jean. I realized it's been gone. Hallelujah. And I look back in the pictures. It's like, yeah, she's just getting at the right angle for me. She's a good wife. Amen. Because who in the world looks in the head like that? Amen. I knew my head would burn in the sun, but I thought it was just the sun. And, but anyway, hallelujah. At least I had it a little while. Hallelujah. But these young folks, the devil's trying to steal their innocency. Innocence. Steal it all together. Now they're taking everything from them. And I don't want to get the, the church flag, so I won't say any more. But y'all know what I'm saying. Jesus, he was very honest to them and to us. It's going to cost something. And it's not that we don't love our family and we don't have a love for, for, for children and our wives. But he says, you're going to have to take up your cross. My cross. And we've got to follow Jesus. The world's going to follow after a lot of crazy stuff. Of course, the Antichrist will cause fire to come down from heaven. We're not following that guy. We're going to follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Because who knows what that means? I don't know. I'm not going to get into it. But I do know for sure, no matter what the devil sends, he's going to send his best now, and you will get the worst later. He says sin will be uh, in, in, enjoyed for a season. Now, I don't know what season is that, it, that is. We went from summer and winter and fall and, and cold and super cold, cold enough to see your breath in your house. Isn't that true, Sister Sandy? I'm telling you, you wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you, and most people don't. I had one couple come visit. I said, bring your winter coat. And if you ever went to Chicago, bring that Chicago coat. And they said, oh, we won't need it. It's August. It's hot. I said, well, okay. Next thing you know, they're like, oh, my God, it's freezing. I said, I told you. I thought you was joking. I would not joke about that. Anyway. But it was cold. Now we have hot hurricane season and not. That's it. Amen. But the season may be short. But God, he, he lets us get the best of heaven now. But really, the best is yet to come. I want to get so used to it that it's no big change. Hallelujah. As we're living for God, that it's no big change. And I worship in our presence of God. And then we start thinking on the things of God. Hallelujah. That we're with him. And imagine the most common thing are the streets and the streets are made of gold. And the whole world is trying to accumulate it. And that's just what we use for whatever transport or walking, whatever we need for pavement. Amen. You hit a pothole, I'm a billionaire. It doesn't matter. So is everybody else. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're not worried about the gold accumulation. We're worried about the Jesus accumulation. Hallelujah. And the distraction for the young folks is that they miss some of their innocency. And it's true. I think about this rich young ruler. In Mark 7, 10 and 17. And, and he went to Jesus. I, I like these applications and how Jesus responded to people. And, and when he was gone, there came one running. He came running. Imagine. You would think that would be a good idea. 
it, it, you know, because preachers were always looking for people to be involved, the ministry in the church, even department heads that maybe aren't preachers, but you're in ministry, and you, man, you got somebody excited, and then it really came running. I want to do it. Yeah, like this. Hallelujah. And here it came running. Look what he said. And he asked the Lord, good master. He was respectful. What shall I do to inherit the kingdom of life, of eternal life? And Jesus said, why call me good? Hallelujah. It's like if you, if you try to compliment Elder Sarton too much, he's not going to go for that. <laughs> Amen. He told me, he said, you know, I told him it's a nice tie. He says, I know you mean it, but some people I know they say it and they're trying for something else. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I just tried to learn complimentary flattery. Okay, it's only so far from me too. Amen. But, but, but that's kind of what it was. Why are you trying to flatter me here? There's only one good and it's God. Everybody say it's God. There's one good, and it's God. Say it out loud. There's one good, and it's God. And here's the hard part. Thou knowest the Ten Commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Don't bear false witness. Don't defraud. Honor your mother. Honor your father. And he answered, Master, all these I've observed from my youth. Moral character. Intestinal fortitude. What a guy. That's the kind of guy you want, right? But Jesus looked at him, and here's the hard part. One thing. Everybody say one thing. One thing lackest thou. Go sell all the whatsoever you have and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. How do we get it? Not holding on. It's God's. That's the way I feel about everything, really. I had nothing when I came. Sister Jeannie, she knew me, and, and the few that knew me. Amen? So everything I have, it's his anyway. So it's no big deal to give it away. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord I can give. I remember one time I thought, Man, missionaries in church, I can't wait. I was poor. My wife and I had a baby. The baby died. I was working three jobs, doing everything I can to, to pay it off. And, man, I had like 10 bucks in my pocket or 7 bucks. And, the, and I said, man, they got some rich folks. They can give 100. This one gave 500. That one gave 1,000. I said, man, that's unbelievable. Lord, I can't wait till I can give 100. And the Lord says, okay, why don't you give what you got? It's like, Lord, I only got 7 bucks. Do I have to repeat myself? I said, okay, let's give that seven bucks. Hallelujah. So up I came. I gave the seven bucks. I was rejoicing, Brother Sarton. Not the seven bucks is a lot, right? Amen? But it's five bucks for gas so I can make it to work. You can't go anywhere now on five bucks. But at the time, you could. Amen? On the way home, the Lord said, look in your wallet. Pulled up my wallet. Not in my pocket. Because some folks may sneak a little something in your pocket maybe. Amen? In the wallet, Brother Pierce. And he put the seven bucks back. Hallelujah. But I rejoiced like I gave 100. And so the day came that I did have 100. Amen. I was so happy, man. I'll be so happy I can give $100. And all of a sudden, uh, there it is. All the bills paid. Things are getting a little better. People I had to owe, I don't owe no more. Things are getting a little better. I'm so happy. And the Lord says, there's your 100. Put it in the pocket. Put it up there. We put it there. Hallelujah. God took care of us. Say, Lord, it'd be great one day if I could give 1,000. Uh-oh, Brother Klein, you're rich. No, I'm just saying, I'd be happy to be. Amen. And sure enough, we did it, and God did it. He took care of us. We was at camp meeting. And missionaries aren't supposed to have money. Y'all know that, right? So, but we got bills, so we got to pay. And, of course, we kind of got more bills as you travel. And so we was at camp meeting, and Brother Guy was taking an offering. And some of the folks never seen him. And so I thought, this is not good. I was way on that other side over there in kind of VIP section, but in the back because I didn't want people to see me or whatever. And so... The Lord said, put your thousand in now. I said, Lord, people there, they're looking at us. I don't know if y'all talk to God like that, but anyway, I was like, they're going to think they got a thousand? I'm not going to get no offerings. And the Lord said, I told you to put it in. So I said, okay. So I went and told him, we're going to put it. And I said, I'm going to give it. But the Lord said, go get the check, because I had the check in the, at the uh, cabin. So on the way to the cabin, I was going to get the check. My wife says, I want you to put it in right now. You know, went up there, they counted you. I said, okay, I'm going to go. I'll be right back. So as I'm going out the way, guess what happens? A guy stops me. He said, man, I remember seeing you here the first day when you came, and God told me we want to give you something. So $2,000. I put in 1000 and God gave 2000 back. That don't happen all the time, Brother Sarton. If not, I would, you know, not need more money. would stay over there. Hallelujah. But it don't happen like that. Hallelujah. But I was obedient. Amen. And, and money isn't, isn't what God is saying. And I'm not saying that to make you uh, 
pressure you or make you feel funny. But I'm letting you know there's an element of God when you release it, God gives it back. Sometimes it's not money, it's your tires don't go flat or your car don't break down or this person gets shot over there and you missed it. One time we was traveling and we missed, uh, I forgot what it was, and I hate to be late, really, I do. My wife knows it, but sometimes I'm waiting on my wife and she's a good wife. And I try not to get upset because I don't want blood pressure medicine because then I don't have no money. Hallelujah. So, so something happened. It wasn't her. It was something beyond our control. And it was about an hour and a half. And as we finally got there, right at the point where we would have been, uh, uh, a boat hit the bridge where we would have been at. And, and a bunch of people died. The whole thing fell down. And, and, and so I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to keep trusting you. I may not understand it all. Young folks, we got to keep trusting him. we got to keep trusting him. I know some things are uncertain. they got to say you got to say all that. Just say that and pass your class and go back and say those people are nuts. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just saying, you don't need to fail just because whatever. If that's what they believe. They just don't know truth. we got to have truth. we got to have a love for the truth. Amen. Imagine this man came running to Jesus. He humbled himself. And he says, after you sell all that you have, and the dudes looked at him. I'm going to abbreviate real fast. And he says, but who could be saved? Who could be saved? Because the guy walked away sorrowful, for he had much. You see, he had a, a and I'm not against people having opportunities and, a, and, and advancements and things. But he says those things was his confidence. Those things was his trust instead of God. Because God, if God's the way that I know he is, when you release it, he gives you more. What he trusts you with is what he will give you. It just never fails. I don't know how to say it any other way. So I wanted to be a $5 heir, and I was. I became a $10 heir, and I was. Became a $1,000 heir, I was. Never made it to the millions, but I tried. I tried. Went to Zambia. We got a million quatches. Our first paycheck, Brother Sarton. Hallelujah. Became a millionaire the first day. Paid the rent, half a million. Hallelujah. Put gas in the car, quarter of a million. You got to live on a quarter of a million for the month, by the way, and that's not too much, maybe 80 bucks. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Lord knows. So this man come up to Jesus, and he told him, he said, one thing lackest thou, take up your cross and follow me. As we look, we can see there's a very costly thing that we must do. Jesus told them. He said, look, for the gospel's sake, verily I say unto you, there's no man that left his house, his brethren, his sisters, his father, his wife, his children, his brethren, lands for my sake and the gospel's sake. But he shall receive 100-fold. What? 100-fold. I could even put it up there. It's okay, though. 100-fold. That is a tremendous return. 100-fold. You put in a dollar, you get $100. Isn't that something? You could become a hundred there. Amen. Pretty quick. But we know that God, he's reaching and he's asking people. Will you follow me? Follow me. What is the world saying to the lost? The world is saying there's no such thing as lost. You can just transcendental thought into whatever reality that you choose. You can even say that you're a unicorn and we'll have to say, hey, that's a unicorn. According to them. But according to the word, things are forever settled in heaven and earth. And that's the danger. They don't like that part. Because there's an absolute judgment of God that is coming. And the devil will tell whatever lie is necessary that people would be deceived. But the Lord says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There's a life that you live. There's a testimony that we give. None of us are perfect. And that's the hard part that I've learned with people. Is that we all are imperfect. And we want us all to be like Jesus. But none of us are totally. We're just trying, aren't we? I'd rather be with people that are trying than people that don't even try. Hallelujah. And let people know they're not perfect things. There's a perfect God, and we're pursuing him to have a perfect walk with him. And not that I'm judging myself by others, but I'm going to judge myself by the word of God and what God wants for me. God's calling for me isn't the same calling for you. I couldn't stay if I wanted to. The Lord wanted me. I, I was like, you got to go. I remember as I sat there with uh, lunch, Brother Sarton says, you know what? Of course, I was, I was called to be a missionary, not that I got to choose what it was, but it's like, could you pick a harder one? Hallelujah. 
Brother Pierce, it's not like I had a choice, really. But it's like it's the hardest of all. Amen. So many of them get rejected and all the rest. But the sergeant said, it's time. And I thought, Doosh. my heart fell out. It's like, but it's not like I'm going across town. It's not like I'm going across state. I'm not going across the country. We're going across the world. And we got to le- leave and sell everything to go. You know what? Let's go. I'm willing to do it. We got their endorsement. It's time. Bishop prayed. Brother Tenney prayed. Off we go. Hallelujah. It was quite a challenge. We had to drive back then. It's not like the internet age, right? You could do your interview via Zoom. Does that work good? Well, we sold many cars on Zoom. I didn't think so. Amen. You got to get that touch. Ooh, let me touch you, man. How you doing? How you doing? Put the touch of personality on that. Anyway, Brother Sarton, elder at that time would say, Bishop Sarton, 50-50. They would tell you no. Right? That was old school. Brother Mike Sarton said, don't worry. You got a maiden in the shade, Brother Klein. Easy peasy Japanesey. Amen? I guess I can't say that no more. Amen? But he just said easy peasy. Amen? Whatever he said. And so here we're going 700 miles, and that's when it's 55 miles an hour. We were teeter-tottering. Oh, Lord, what are we going to do? If they say no, Brother Sarton said, don't worry about it. You got it made. Elder Sarton says, you know what he said? Just because they said no now doesn't mean it's forever. Just wait, and the door is going to open. And when God opens it, you know what? Nobody can close it. Hallelujah. So when God opens the door, nobody can close it. As you're witnessing the people and you feel something in the Holy Ghost, start exercising your faith. Young people, exercise your faith. Amen. Let God start using you. We had little kids. We talked about it at lunch. Nine-year-old girls. Anybody nine? Anybody nine? Nobody nine? Not one nine-year-old? Amen. So this little nine-year-old girl, her name's Justina. She won her mother her grandmother, her aunt, two brothers, and eventually that one man that you saw baptized was her dad, nine years old. Hallelujah. Now, who would ignore a nine-year-old? Most people. Amen. But Jesus didn't. And I was close to that age when I visited Sunday school. And here I am. Amen. And now we get to start a new Sunday school. I was told Brother Sartre, I was so excited. We got some young folks. We started on the porch. Amen. It's hot. Hot. When I say hot. Hot. I don't even take a shower. I just do it after because it's already there. Just get the soap because you're already, whew. man, it's hot. Sister Shona, she loves the heat. I think she'd like it. I always think of Sister Shona when I'm going like, how can she like this? Hallelujah. But anyway, we have fans. Sister Klein's got the cooler cloth. We got the fans on it. So hallelujah. Y'all going to come visit and y'all say, you're right, Brother Klein. It is hot. Amen. But thank God for what he's doing. So finally, when missions approved us, we were so happy. We were so excited. And as we went, we were able to open, God opened the door. And one year, we opened the door on the farm. One young man you saw, he's grown now. That was me next to him. He was the little boy when I was standing on the termite man, Brother Samuel. He's still preaching the gospel. He's still a preacher. Amen. And, and those young children and young people have grown, and they're in ministry, and they're doing the work of God. One of the Bible students is now general superintendent of Zimbabwe, where they wouldn't allow us to go to be one, but we could visit and all that. Finally, the door opened, and I told him, if you be faithful and you wait on God, just like Bishop told me, when he opens the door, guess what? Nobody can close it. I think we have to be faithful. Stay faithful to God. Stay encouraged. Keep your heart right with the spirit of worship that's moving and what God wants to do. There's no limit to what God has intended. I know we're all thinking of a great end time revival and maybe in our mind it's one thing. But you know more than 7,000 a day get the Holy Ghost? That's almost two day of Pentecost every day. Isn't that exciting? Missions. Missions. You're giving every $300 pledge. If that's 25 bucks, that's a soul you're winning to the kingdom of God automatic. Guaranteed. For a while, we did really good. We were like a three-for-one special. But now we're back to the porch, so it's hot. (laughs) So I get some credit from those previous ones. But we got some folks coming. Brother Sarton sees the progress. I keep mentioning what's happening. And we can't stay on the porch forever because we need about 80 people to buy a building because the prices are high, and I'm not going to be negative with it, but it's just expensive. But God can take care of it. He knows what to do. Amen. And he knows what he's doing, and he's going before us. So what happened, Brother Klein? How'd you get it started? I thought about what Jesus said. And, and, and the Lord told me quite, quite simply, he says, this cometh by what? Much prayer 
and fasting. And I said, man, this spirit is so stubborn. Very similar to downtown New Orleans if you try to start something from scratch out there. Same thing with the expense, if you can imagine. It's pretty close to about trying to do something from there. And the people are just as resistant. They're there to make money. They don't want to hear about all this or have a good time. But I said, okay, God, what do we do? So I started fasting and intermediate, so I only would eat within a certain window and fast till the next day and do that. 92 days. Guess what happened? One so. <laughs> I did it again. Guess what happened? We had the nurse that came. Remember the nurse? Kept it going again. What happened? Her husband came. We did it one more time. We had the son to come. But the sad part is their term is over. So hopefully those nurses come back. Amen? But with those people, a young girl came as an exchange student. And with them, as they come, another replacement of the people there are taking their place. So we went from none. Now we got three. Now we got four. Now we got another nurse. Now we got another person. Now we got another young student. Amen? So as we keep trying, we just keep pushing and pursuing what God has. And that's to seek and save that which is lost. As we look at the examples and the sacrifice, Jesus said, follow me. He said to the disciples in, in the book of Acts and Peter preaching, what do we do? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And, and this is what he said in verse 40. And save yourselves from this untoward generation. So it's kind of like untoward. I thought, what the world does that mean? It's like you're literally backing up in reverse, which is doubt of faith going the wrong way. So he said, while they're going away from me, you come to me. Hallelujah. And they that gladly receive the word. That's the part I like. Glad. I was glad. Brother Sarton said it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I know it's a, a, a difficult grind when you're working and you're thinking, what's it going to be like? But in the presence of God, y'all, we got to shake ourselves like David did. We got to encourage ourselves. Hey, we're coming anyway. Amen. I know, well, the other churches do that. Don't worry, Brother Sarton. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep coming. I'm going to follow what you say. Amen. I know it's hard, but I'm going to get up. Amen. I get a little bit of a nap. Amen. In the world, they, they work untirelessly for, to, to, to enjoy whatever they got. And that same day, they added 3,000. Imagine. 3,000. And they continued. He didn't stop. Steadfastly. That was determined. And the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, breaking of bread and prayers. Let's stand. God knows what he's doing. He's in charge of what everything's at hand. I had, I had a part on Revelation. I didn't want to read the Revelation to scare people. I, I let people know Revelation is one big giant revelation. It's not a bunch. There's no S there. So, so the general thing is Jesus is coming for his bride, and there's going to be a judgment, and we've got to be ready. I mean, you can get into the frogs and the smoke and all that and get scary, but I try not to get scary. I want it to be building up to faith, building up to faith, to know that when they come, Something happens. And I think about my first missionary offering. Uh, they had crowns. The one thing in heaven we get to give is the crown of life. And we're going to realize we don't deserve it. Because I only got it because of Jesus in heaven and we're going to lay it at his feet. And as we lay that thing at his feet, that's the one thing we'll be able to give in heaven. And then when Jesus comes back, he's going to have on many crowns. And written upon the names of the forehead of the folks of God that are faithful and loyal to him. I want to see him. I don't care what the world is saying or how they're projecting to me that I should say or do. I want to be the real Christian so they can see the real light and they can have a real life for God. I think that's going to bring other congregations and other denominations to saying, you know what? We may have to unify together because no telling what's ahead. I said, well, that's good, but we're not going to detour from what the Bible says in the true book of Acts, church. Because that was the first church. Why well, don't want to go take a second one or a third one? I want the first one. Amen. I'm not being silly. I'm just letting you know. And when you have that stand, people are going to say, well, what's the difference? I'm glad you asked. On the day of Pentecost, they were all gathered together. Amen. They waited just as Jesus said. Ten days. And as they waited... 500 saw him go away in the air. 380 was away doing something, but 120 was faithful. And they waited, and they received the Holy Ghost, just like Jesus said. So where was the 380? They missed it. I don't know. Maybe they was in the 3,000. I give them a maybe. And those were the ones that were added. I don't know. Maybe they were out doing work. Some were bringing some bread. I don't know. Who knows? There's a lot of stuff when you get a lot of people. 
But God said, Lord, let me be one of those that's tearing and that's waiting and fulfilling the call, answering the prayer, mm. being dedicated to the church and committing to the work of God, saying, Lord, that's, that little bit of money is not that much for a soul because it will reach souls. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and thank Him. Lord, we thank You, Jesus. Lord, You see these wonderful people. Lord, You see the work of God that You've called us to do, to preach the gospel to every creature around the world. Lord, You said that we should pray and that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that You send forth laborers to fulfill and reach the harvest. Honest, dedicated laborers. And oh, by the way, Lord, will You use me let me be one of the laborers to reach the lost while we can. Because we know your hour is approaching. Your time is near. God, we got to be ready. Lord, let us lay aside every sin and every weight and every doubt and unbelief. But let our faith increase in you, knowing, releasing apostolic gifts into these young folks. That they could pray and have miracles happen at their schools. And children can come to you by the dozens. And congregations can come and unify under Bishop Sarton and be brought to truth. Lord, you saw it happen overseas. It can happen here. There's honest people that are seeking you, Lord. Let us be that voice. Let us be that hand. Let us speak that word. Let us give that testimony. Let us be that witness. Lord, you're coming. And we need you, God, in our life. We need you, Lord, in our family's life, in our lost loved one's life, this West Bank life, even that city. Lord, we push back the gates of hell in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Yes.